It's a Friday. Let's say it's a thank God Friday uh, as we get into another weekend here on Frontier Open Bell. I am posting them off. I hope you had a very positive week so far. Let's run you through quickly the markets. Largely positive across the board yesterday. The Nigerian market came back strongly above the 97,000 level. The BRVM climbed to 260.56. Egyptian market XR, four basis points to close the market week in Cairo. The Nairobi stock market fell 1.2%. Then you've got the GSC up by 1.04%. Broadly speaking, positive Thursday as we head into the weekend. So let's take that uh, uh, up and then it all the way to the biggest news in East Africa. President William Ruto, the Kenyan president, says he's going to con um, put together a summit next year, just about this time, that will focus on how to address the trust deficit between the government and the people. That's part of what he told the stakeholders conference for this week, and we're looking up to that. He also spoke about the current face-off between the workers of the Jubo Kenyatta International Airport over the multi-billion dollars Indian Adani Group to uh, revitalize and expand the operations of the iconic international airport in Nairobi. Let's move on. Crude oil to push Uganda's uh, uh, growth into double digits. That's a very bullish sentiment and coming from the International Monetary Fund as Uganda looks to start producing crude oil in 2025. The countries, however, want to beware of the resource costs, use those oil resources judiciously. And the Bank of Uganda says it's raised about uh, 332 Ugandan shillings. That's roughly 90 million US dollars from the weekly Treasury bills auction, while China has reaffirmed its commitment to Somali's state building process, while the port of Mombasa has received the first LNG powered ship or vessel at the port. And finally, POSCO of Tanzania posted $40 million in Black Rock mining business. Let's come to West Africa. What's making headlines? It's been a very interesting week so far for Nigeria, with Naira dipping in and out of the dollar, falling more than 5%. On Thursday, it's going to end a uh, brutal week, as it were, overall speaking, because of scarce liquidity. In the meantime, the EFDB marking its 68th anniversary this week, also floated a $2 billion five-year paper, maturing the 18th of September 2029, at 3.500% at the international place. The global benchmark is second in 2024, and that was bought mainly by institutional investors from the Americas, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Asia. And GISCO, one of Nigeria's top tier banks, reporting one trillion naira in profit for the first six months of this year, earnings per share came a robust 223% upside on a year-on-year -year basis. Profit after tax came at 222.9%. And there is no clear path yet to Nigeria's fuel import stoppage, even with the Dangote refinery producing fuel and the whole issue of loading and pricing remain very sticky in the murky waters of Nigeria's political petrol politics and everything else in between. Let's see how a resolution will soon be achieved. And Ghana Vice President is proposing, by the way, uh, to shift the country's solar energy as a primary source of electricity for the resource-rich West African economy, both in gold and oil and cocoa, by the way. And finally, talking about cocoa, Ghana can ask this cocoa prices 45% uh, as uh, to uh, a stave off smugglers, uh, while Ivory Coast has uh, reportedly exported about 1.7 million tons of cocoa bean uh, in the month uh, of August. There's a pr cocoa prices diving as we speak. Uh, future prices so are both the London ICE and the New York ICE. Our trading water for December delivery. Let's uh, get on to Southern Africa. And Transnet could see some money come its way as we see some support coming through for South Africa for the green energy uh, solutions. In the meantime, all eyes now on Thursday next week, September 19th, for the Central Bank under Leseja Kangyo Kangyango to raise or to cut its interest rate at least by 25 basis points. The ECB raised the curtain yesterday by 25 basis points to so the downside. The FOMC, that's the US Fed, will decide on Tuesday the um, 
17th. Keep that in mind. Sibaye still water in South Africa is looking to cut output of palladium and platinum output at its Montana mines in the U.S. by 45% part of restructuring. While the Reserve Bank of uh, Zimbabwe is looking to double efforts against currency saboteurs, especially those who are trading the, the currency, the new currency, the ZIG, of the black market. And CITCO, listed on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, is planning an irrigation infrastructure to equip its growers to support the, the, the product, the farm products that the company really need. And first round of South Africa is, has been forced to book about 3 billion rand in provision uh, because of the ongoing investigation by the UK FCA over some loans it granted in the United Kingdom. Those are the headlines. There, let's take it all the way to North Africa. Just sum it up for you this Friday as we step into uh, the weekend. Uh, uh, by the way, Morocco is overtaking China as the leading automotive uh, supplier to the European Union, while Egypt and Norway are exploring green hydrogen partnership as Egypt looks to uh, uh, stave off the current crisis around gas supply and electricity provision. Uh, in the meantime, a handshake with Germany in terms of trade exchange between Egypt was about $2.5 billion between January and June, while the United States has granted South Sudan $100 million to provide meals because things are really, really difficult in that country, in the Sahel region of the Horn of Africa. And those are your headlines. Do have a great Friday. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Let's get back together on Monday and continue Frontier Open the Bell from here.